Welcome to Why in the Morning, the hashtag to use if it's Tuesday. It's hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platforms. At Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me across all my social media platforms. So in this particular conversation, uh, we, look at, we look at the recycling, reusing, and refurbishing of uh, your electronics that have gotten out of use. It's a conversation you want to stick around, especially after knowing that our country, Kenya, generates an average of 3,000 tons of waste each year from computers, monitors, printers, fridge, uh, mobile phones, batteries, and, US and uh, other electronic devices that you may know of. So most definitely lack of e-waste awareness and uh, poor disposal system leads to polluting the environment and other health issues. In studio, I am joined by Bonnie Mbithi, who is the general manager of We Center and CFSK. Thank you very much for creating time, Bonnie. Thank you for having me. Did I say it right? It's totally, it. Totally. All right. So, Bonnie, starting us off. Yes, I wouldn't mm. want to miss this. Yeah. yeah. So, we celebrated the International Youth Day on 12th of August. And we were fortunate enough to also host uh, the youngest uh, CAS uh, um, Minister of ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs, uh, Miss Nadia Abdallah, right here on our virtual youth concert. Okay. You, on the other hand, <laughs> you were awarded top 35 and uh, 35 in technology, Youth of the Year in Technology, unveiled by His Excellency the President Uhuru Kenyatta during the International Youth Day celebration today. 12th of August. Did you see that coming? No, I, I, d <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect it. Okay. But uh, yes, it happened and it's very motivating to me as a person. Mm -hmm. And also, I believe it will be motivating to other people. Mm -hmm. um, it, it shows that whatever you do in your own small way, somebody somewhere will always recognize it. All right. Yeah. How did you feel? How did it feel to be recognized uh, for your work you've put in into technology? It was, okay. um, I would say it was exciting, but most importantly, it mm -hmm. was quite motivating. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we keep, we keep working, we keep uh, pushing things hard, but not every time you get somebody to recognize you uh, or be appreciated for your mm -hmm. work. So it really is motivating, not only for me, but also for the entire team at We Center for people to continue uh, making sure that whatever we do, we are doing it and doing it very well. And congratulations again. Thank you very much. All right. If you are not the, uh, the one who walked away with top 35 under 35 in technology, who would you have nominated? Wow. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> question. I yes. have totally not thought about it. Yes. But uh, of course, there are a lot of young people doing amazing things mm -hmm. in um, agri-tech in uh, things to do with uh, creating there are very many startups that are coming up so i think in kenya is one of those hubs in, in in africa where we have amazing things happening created by amazing innovators and most of these innovators are young people so if you look around most of the startups that are coming up you find the startups that are being built by the youth which is quite motivating and i believe it will not only be motivating for the people actually doing those startups or doing those businesses, mm -hmm. but also for other young people who also want to start their own businesses. So I, I think there are many young people doing amazing things out here. All right. Yeah. So, Bonnie, in our conversation today, we're looking at uh, trading the e-waste. Yes. And I would like to find out what is e-waste and how harmful is it to the environment? All right. So, e-waste is, um, first, is anything that is electrical or electronic that has either been overtaken by technology or has become obsolete, meaning your old um, monitors, mobile phones, TVs, all these things, when they reach end of life or when you no longer use them. Cables, yeah, anything that is using battery or using uh, power mm -hmm. and has either been overtaken by technology or has become obsolete qualifies to become electronic waste. Mm -hmm. It is very harmful. The reason why it is very harmful is that um, all the electronics are made from metals, heavy metals. Yeah? If you remember the periodic table that we used to do in, in high school. Chemistry. Chemistry, yeah? Yes. I know it was not easy. So 69 of those elements, they are found in electronic waste. Not electronic waste, in electronics. How many percent? 
69 of them. Wow. And I think they should be about more than 200. So 69 of those heavy metals, including mercury, um, palladium, the others called germanium, uh, uranium, lead, lead mm -hmm. all those metals. So if those metals are not properly uh, taken care of and they come into contact with your body, they bring very many complications, things to do with um, lowering your immunity, things to do with complications on uh, your nervous system, mm -hmm. cancer, a lot of them are causing cancer. So in fact, that's why you see there's a lot of cancer cases raising in, in, in Kenya and also in Africa. So you find all those metals, if you look uh, at them, they have different illnesses that they will bring if they're not properly disposed. So ideally, electronic waste should be very well disposed and it should be done by professionals because it also requires sophisticated technology and equipment for safe disposal. Okay. Yes. So uh, let's look at uh, what does uh, the role of We Center have to play in all this? So for We Center, ideally our mandate is to make sure that the environment is safe of environment or rather of e-waste. So we ensure that we collect uh, electronic waste from anywhere we can, from homes, from government, from corporates, from schools and all institutions. Once it's collected, we take it through uh, a rather very complex processing. We do separation because all those fractions, they are supposed to be treated separately. So you cannot just take the entire TV and, and start processing it. So it's properly separated. We take uh, data in terms of tonnage to also know at the end of the month or at the end of the year how many kgs or how many tons we're able to do. So it goes through a very long process for it to be safely disposed. The other thing that we do is uh, awareness. So we also create a lot of awareness around electronic waste. We've been doing a lot of awareness. So every year we do campaigns. Yeah, We partner with different companies uh, just to make sure that our um, Kenya citizens and also anyone who is in Kenya understands how you're supposed to safely take care of your e-waste. We've partnered recently with Carrefour, the, the supermarkets. So all Carrefour supermarkets have our e-waste collection bins. Mm -hmm. So if you go to any Carrefour outlet, you find there's a bin that has been branded We Center and Carrefour, where you're able to dispose your electronics if they, if they have reached end of life or they've, they've been, been overtaken by technology. Also partnered with Safaricom. Uh, so that's around awareness. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, people know that some of the electronics have sensitive data. Like if you bring your mobile phone or your laptop or your desktop, so you also do safe data destruction to ensure that your data is very well taken care of. So we do that for companies, for individuals, anybody who brings their data carrying devices. Mm -hmm. We ensure that we do safe data destruction also. All right. How does the CFSK involved with vCenter? So CFSK is Computers for Schools Kenya. So in fact, Computer for Schools Kenya is a, a founding organization of the We Center. We've been um, operating in ICT in education, supporting schools uh, to bridge the digital divide, ensuring that they have high quality computers or laptops. We've been setting up computer labs in uh, all over the country. Nice. We've done over 400,000 computers mm -hmm. everywhere in Kenya. We have eight regional offices in different counties also in Kenya. Okay. So we did so many computers and realized that we were also generating electronic waste and nobody was doing uh, e-waste recycling. So that's how now we evolved and started the We Center. So the We Center now purely deals with e-waste recycling and CFSK on the other hand supports schools. So we are still supporting e-learning. Like now during COVID, we still have um, students that we are supporting in uh, getting affordable laptops. Uh, we are supporting parents on how to do um, home learning for the students. And um, we have different projects. So we still partner. CFSK is, is a non-profit and the We Center is a social enterprise. So that's, that's the connection and um, GM for both of them. Oh, nice, nice. How long have you been the general manager for both We Center should be and, and CFSK? It should be about five to six years. Oh, good. Okay, good. Five mm. to six years. That's long enough for you to tell us the new products that come from uh, e-waste. What are some of the new products that come so from e-waste? So once you process 
uh, e-waste when you go to the recycling. So what you do, you get certain raw materials. So what you're doing is like extraction. So you find that with uh, um, the electric equipment, there's plastics. So we're able to get the plastic. We partner with local plastic recyclers who take our plastic from the plastic that we get from the e-waste. They're able to come up with innovative products. There's uh, plastic fencing poles, companies that are doing that. Others are able to make even chairs. There is a company that is able to make diesel from that plastic, lubricants. Uh, the other one is um, metal. Metal is melted to make new metal. Um, copper. Copper, of course, you know copper is valuable, so it's used to make uh, jewelry and other things. Um, things like um, batteries. We also collect batteries. Batteries, we, ha we, we have a system whereby we're able to test the batteries that can be reused. So the ones that can be reused, we're making our own battery packs. So these battery packs can be used for solar home systems. Yeah. So there's so much that you can do from the fractions that we get in electronic waste. The other bit is that there's also valuable metals that are found in electronic waste. Like um, there's uh, gold, there's silver, there's copper. Those ones are now properly recycled and they go back to the food chain. Or rather they go to the ecosystem to make new products. So okay. instead of going to do mining, uh, the traditional mining to mm -hmm. get gold and to get silver and these other metals. Mm -hmm. You can actually mine them from uh, electronic waste. And then now they return to make new products. Very interesting. So what happens at we center apart from recycling? You guys are offering raw materials to different uh, manufacturing industries on a different level of industry that is plastic if mm. they want to do jewelry. Yes, yes. All right. That's, that's one of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in Kenya, we don't have e-waste law, okay. meaning the disposal rate is very low, but mm -hmm. it has been growing because of the awareness that we've been creating. Mm -hmm meaning we have to ship out certain fractions that we're not able to handle locally. Okay. Like now the extraction that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. extraction of the um, precious metals and the others that are called um, um, rare raw materials. Okay. Yeah. Those ones we have to ship to Europe. So we have partnered with companies in Europe who are able to do that extraction. So they extracted and then they are sold to the manufacturers. So it's a circular kind of way, economy. So you find everything that comes to the WE Center is properly recycled, yeah, to form or to make new products. And then whatever we cannot recycle locally is shipped to people who are able to do the extraction, the extract, and then it's taken to the manufacturers to also make new equipment, mm. even including the batteries. Mm -hmm. So even the batteries that we're not able to reuse, once we ship them back, the manufacturer is able to make new batteries from those batteries. So you find nothing will be uh, discarded to okay. the environment. We'll go back to the law, yeah. the lack of having uh, laws on when it comes to uh, matters on e-waste. And um, for right now, I would like to find out, yeah? Mm. So for anyone who wants to get into the recycling business, so what sort of skills does one need to have? Or oh, if someone is watching this and would love to be part of We Center, mm. so what sort of skills are you guys looking for? I think if you want to start, uh, I believe uh, starting a business, what you need is passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and when we were starting the WeCenter, Center, nobody had an e-waste degree or environment degree. I can tell you that for sure. My degree is in law. Yes. Yeah? And uh, right now I have a lot of knowledge on e-waste recycling and circular economy. So what someone needs is just to do your research. You need to study uh, the trade very well, yeah, to understand it. But where we are now, of course, we need people who have knowledge in terms of environment, environment issues, also matters to do with policy, and also matters to do with technology. So those are some of the things that we would be looking at if we want someone to join the WE Center. But if you want to start the business, mm -hmm. it is not, you don't need to know anything about you is, but you just need to have the passion and then you go into research you mentioned earlier that you have a background in law yes how has that helped you as a as a managing director I to this <laughs> uh, cfsk yes law is a life skill I, I think there are many lawyers out here who are not practicing law but you find when we study law 
at the university, you study a lot of things. So don't just study uh, the typical law that people know. You, there's so much that comes with law. So you find some of those things that we're able to study in law, they assist you in life. Mm -hmm. So even in, uh, in business, uh, and what I do also requires me to understand matters to do with law, legislation, policy. So it has really also assisted me. When you're having somebody who's advising you on legal matters, you know exactly what to look for. If you are getting into contracts, you know uh, what also to look out for. So I can say it has really assisted me. Okay. Yes. What's the proper way or to dispose e-waste? Considering we Kenyans, uh, we consume lots of electronics. When a new product comes into the market, mm. we forget the old and on to the new. So yes. what is the proper way to dispose uh, electronics? Uh, the first thing I would encourage people to do is to do segregation. It's something called segregation at source. So mm. segregation at source is, it means segregate your waste in your house yeah so don't just have one dustbin in your house whereby uh, on thursday somebody comes and collects your garbage just collects everything but if you look at what other countries are doing this segregation you have different ways of um, segregating your waste it says that if it is general waste there are people who are dealing with general waste they are collecting that if it is food waste, there are people who are collecting food waste. If it is uh, the plastic bottles, there is uh, uh, an organization that is collecting that. If it is e-waste, we center is there to collect. So all you need to do is to ensure that you segregate your e-waste, your waste rather. And if you have e-waste, just reach out to we center. If you go to our website, there's a simple form that you'll fill and say where you are. Yeah? And we're able to capture your data and collect from even your house. You can... De deliver even your e to the Carrefour supermarkets yeah? if you're going for shopping. You can go to Safaricom shops and, and take uh, your, also your e waste there. And then once you have it, or you can also take it directly to our offices, we're off the Eastern Bypass, okay. and it will be properly disposed, will give you a certificate and information to show the processes that we undertook to ensure that your US was properly disposed. All right. Is there a form of any payment am I supposed to pay if I if I fill that form from your website, mm. which you're going to give us the, the name of the website, mm. and uh, I call you guys, you guys come to my home. Mm. Is there any form of payment I'm supposed to make? For now, nobody is paying anybody. Mm -hmm. We will not pay you mm -hmm. and you will not pay us. Mm -hmm. uh, as we progress and there is proper law, you find with proper law, You'll be expected, in, even without the law, mm -hmm. you're expected to take care of your waste. Mm -hmm. yeah? But people think that now you're generating waste, but you need to be paid for generating the waste. <laughs> so that's where the confusion <laughs> is. But ideally, you're supposed to take care of your waste. <laughs> yeah? We will not charge you to dispose. Okay. But it will get to a point where you'll be required to pay us. Uh, yeah. The right. normal way, we, we are garbage collectors. Mm -hmm. The normal way you pay your garbage collectors, mm -hmm. you'll be paying us to, to do that. But for now, we'll be doing these services for free. And we're even doing estate drives. We're mm -hmm. moving to different estates in Nairobi on different weekends. Mm -hmm. Camp in there mm -hmm. and people bring in their, uh, their US for us to collect. Okay. Yes. Kenyans love inducement. Now, you have said clearly that no one is paying nobody. Yes. <laughs> we love inducement. I get I I give you my old laptop, mm. my old my old phone, yeah? Yes. And I'm not getting anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing? You've been responsible. Why why country must you be paid to be a responsible citizen? Okay, fair enough. This thing if you <laughs> if you dispose it carelessly, it will come back to you. If you have battery carrying equipment in your house and you don't dispose them, your children will start playing with them. What if I argue that I'm giving you actually raw materials to make, buy other new b products which are going back to the market and you guys are making money out of it? It is, it is a circular economy. Mm -hmm. We are all in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So you find what you're looking at is the issue of sustainability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because you can imagine if we start saying, okay, now from Monday, we center will be paying anybody who brings this number of kgs of mobile phones you even create 
another uh, opportunity for crime. Oh, yeah. yes. You find somebody can break into your house or break to offices, steal as many IT equipment, bring to WeCenter. How will we be able to justify that this is genuine e-waste disposal or this is stolen? Mm -hmm. So all we need to do is for people to be responsible. And in fact, that's why you see even with a new uh, curriculum, they have introduced environment as a, as a course from, I think, class one or even kindergarten. So that people grow knowing that you're supposed to take care of the environment. If you don't take care of the environment, it will not take care of, care of, care of you. you know? yeah, clear. So we have to be responsible. You don't have to be paid to be responsible. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Apart from uh, uh, the inclusive of uh, the, envir the environment uh, co course in our curriculum, curriculum yes. how does your team go around uh, the mentality of inducements? Because we have Kenyans who most definitely think in that manner that mm. I'm actually giving you uh, uh, raw, raw materials mm. to generate a byproduct, a product, a new product. So how do you guys go around that uh, mentality when so, creating awareness? So um, the most important bit is for people to understand where we are coming from or where, why the U.S. needs to be disposed yeah if you understand that and you see the big picture you not expect to be paid for you to be able to dispose your e-waste mm -hmm. so in creating awareness people have to understand the dangers associated with the improper disposal mm -hmm. because if uh, <coughs> there are people who buy e-waste yeah they will come and buy your um, 10 laptops from your company yeah they will only go and salvage the parts that they require the rest they will be thrown away to maybe Nairobi River or to the environment. And then you find downstream Nairobi River, very big farms that have uh, planted very look good looking vegetables. You eat those vegetables, you absorb heavy metals, you get cancer. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you look at it from a point of um, responsibility and being conscious about the environment, it is more uh, fulfilling than you just been paid to uh, dispose your e-waste. And everywhere in the world, you find there has to be responsibility from the citizens when it comes to matters waste management. And, and you find even other waste management companies, you actually pay them yeah, mm -hmm. to manage your waste because it's a very expensive affair. It is not just going to buy the electronics and, and, and removing the raw materials. It is very expensive. And that's why you see even some of these things we have to ship to Europe mm -hmm. for them to be properly uh, extracted. Yeah. If you go into improper extraction, it is very harmful to the environment and it is also very harmful to the people who are doing it. Okay. So it's a very sophisticated uh, trade, although it also requires a lot of government intervention in terms of policy and also in terms of the law. Okay. Yeah. We've looked at the uh, proper way the consumer can dispose the e-waste. Mm -hmm. How can we reduce the e-waste as a consumer? Mm. Yeah. yeah, as a consumer, reducing is, is, is very easy. Like, uh, I'm seeing you have a tablet and a mobile phone. Yes. You don't need both. Okay. Yeah, so you're also increasing chances of generating e-waste. Mm -hmm. I believe whatever the tablet can do, even the mobile phone can do. That's so true. even in offices, you, we, we are promoting a circular economy approach mm -hmm. such that you don't need to have 10 printers in the office. You only need to have one big printer and it mm -hmm. is connected. So reducing as a consumer, you first need to start reducing the number of gadgets, devices. Reduce your appetite for, for, for these devices. Mm -hmm. If you have a mobile phone that can perform multiple tasks, you don't need another one. Yeah? You find people walking around with three phones, which you never <laughs> understand <laughs> why you have to. Use the level of status. Yes, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so there's that bit. The other mm -hmm. bit, of course, is um, buy um, long-lasting devices. Mm -hmm. yeah. So also go for quality. Um, the other bit, manufacturers, they're also encouraged to make mm -hmm. um, long-lasting equipment mm -hmm. so that we reduce the amount of e-waste that will be generated. Otherwise, if we keep buying counterfeit goods, you find you can buy even uh, two mobile phones or three in a year. But if you're buying good quality, you'll only buy one and mm -hmm. you'll serve even for three to five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right, so let's say I stay in Ruisambu mm -hmm. and a friend of mine is staying in Karen. Yeah? Mm. We can all stop by at We Center to drop uh, an electronic de device that we, we no longer use. Yes. It's as simple as that. There's it's very simple. All you need to do if you stay in Ruisambu, uh, in fact, you can even, it's, we can even make it easier for you. You can go to TRM, there's a Carrefour outlet. Go and take your old mobile phone there. If you have bulk equipment, go to customer care, the car for. Mm -hmm. They will let you know how it will reach the center. If you're in Karen, go to the hub. You can dispose your US at the hub, at the car for. You can also go to Galeria. you find, in, in fact, Galeria will be spoiled for choice because there's Safaricom and there's mm -hmm. car for. You mm -hmm. can dispose in either of them. You can easily fill that form even from your mobile phone. We'll mm -hmm. capture your data mm -hmm. and then we organize. But of course, we'll not send uh, a truck to Karen to pick your one mobile phone. So you find we usually map out uh, different people who have EOS in different areas. Mm -hmm. and then when the vehicle moves, it collects from several locations. Okay. And then also, anytime come to our offices of the Eastern Bypass, mm -hmm. you see what we do and also dispose your EOS there. Mm 